So one of the topics that I've been wanting to touch on on this channel for quite a while now is the whole subject of heaven. Um, since at the end of the day, that's really the ultimate purpose for which the Christian faith exists in the first place. You know, it's well and good to make videos about, you know, the nature of God, uh, how we come to know the existence of God, why various objections to Christianity are absurd, etc. But we always have to keep ourselves fixed on the ultimate finality for which we're engaging in these conversations in the first place. And that ultimate finality is heaven. So, I want to start uh, really a whole series on the subject, particularly from a Catholic to a mystic perspective. I'm going to try to incorporate as many philosophical arguments from unaided reason as I can with this topic. But this is going to be a theological series, so I'm going to be presupposing the dogmatic truth of the Catholic faith on these matters, even as I attempt, as I will, to uh, justify as much as I can uh, on philosophical grounds. So, before we get into it though, uh, we must first be clear on what is meant by heaven as such. What is meant by the term? That's what I'll focus on in this kind of introductory video on it. Uh, I think very often the reason so, so many uh, atheists think of this as just an utter fantasy is because they merely conceive of it as a place simply of, you know, maximized pleasure, uh, extended infinitely across time, let's say. Uh, but that's much more of a character than anything else. While it is true that in the ultimate sense, heaven will ultimately be, you know, a spatial dimension in the, you know, the general resurrection of the new heaven and the new earth, um, which we're going to get into in a future video. Uh, and it will be a state of, of course, beatific joy. And that will be experienced through the mode of our affective faculties, which we will also get into. And it will also go on forever, which we're also going to get into, uh, you know, the whole eternity of heaven. But of course, these are simply material or accidental qualities that flow from uh, an essence that is altogether missed, looked over, or not even addressed or understood at all by these people. Uh, the source and sum of heaven is not reducible to these elements of what we will call accidental beatitude, accident in the you know scholastic sense of the term of meaning, uh, you know, secondary to the essence of the thing. At its very core, at its very root, heaven is the ultimate realization of man's last end or final fulfillment. According to St. Thomas, every agent acts for the sake of an end, which follows on the principle of finality. If an agent acts, it acts for the sake of some uh, inclination, goal, or end state. I covered this in my uh, Foundations for Christianity video, which I'll link in the description. Uh, this is the case for all creatures, and insofar as they fulfill the inclinations and perfective tendencies or capacities, uh, they share in a more indirect way in God, the wellspring of all perfection. This participation in God is uh, much more direct as you go up the, you know, the, the great chain of being, as it's called. But for a rational creature like you and me, it changes substantially and categorically. And that's because for a rational creature... The finality doesn't stop at the edge of material limitations. For a purely corporeal substance, like, say, an animal, uh, sure, it has various perfectible ends. A tree, for example, uh, it tends toward the intake of nutrients and for its own health and its growth. But the extent of this finality is contained squarely within the material limitations of the tree. For a rational creature, however, its dynamism extends beyond material limitations and can go even so far as to grasp, even if only by negation, the existence of the infinite, by which I mean the divine. Now, it is not sufficient for the mind to know the existence of a thing. The dynamism of the mind to know is always insatiable until it can know the inner essence of the thing, uh, the existence of which it grasps. Um, and if that thing is finite, then the dynamism of the mind to know immediately upon recognition of that finite limitation still tends to want to know more. Similarly with the will, uh, once we grab hold of some finite good, once we recognize it precisely as a finite good, the will is still fundamentally not satiated. And we all have personal experience of that. It's also a philosophical, anthropological truth. And St. Thomas actually, in the Summa, he goes through how any kind of uh, 
finite acquisition of some uh, finite good, whether it be like an appetitive good like like food or or pleasure or honor or even um, the fellowship of friends, ultimately will not uh, satiate that infinite dynamism of the will to attain the good. Now, of course, that's not to say uh, the fellowship of friends and such is not uh, going to be part of heavenly beatitude. Indeed, it will. But we're just going at the essence and the pinnacle and the summit of heavenly beatitude. Now, the reason for this insatiability is because the intellect and the will not only grasp particular instances of, uh, you know, the true and the good, but through its discovery of the first cause, the plenitude of existence and goodness, namely God, it seeks union with the wellspring of these transcendentals, because only an infinite source can give a fulfillment to a fundamentally infinite dynamic tendency, inclination, or desire. Uh, that's the essence of what is meant by heaven, as to its very nature. Direct and immediate knowledge of an intimate union with and participation in God, the unconditioned, infinite source of all being, goodness, and truth on the part of a finite, rational creature. That is the heart and soul of what is meant by heaven. And we're going to unpack what this means in future installments and you know, give arguments for what we can. I think this topic is important because if we get this right and understand this as thoroughly grounded in reality, as what we are all by nature ordered to attain as the source of our fulfillment universally as human beings, then we can get on to questions such as the organization of society, the structuring of the family, the political community, the role of the state, etc., in a manner that's harmonious with and subordinate to what all of these things should ultimately be aimed toward as the purpose for which uh, they exist in the first place. My goal here is for at the end of the series that you will understand on perhaps a deeper level than you do already why this is the most important thing to fight for personally, socially, and even politically. Now in the next video in the series, uh, we're going to go over how we can know that man is ultimately ordered toward a final end or a final fulfillment, uh, and whether it can be shown that this is universal for man as something belonging to his very nature. Uh, we aren't going to prove right away that his final fulfillment or final end rests ultimately in God. We're going to establish that afterward. Um, but we're going to establish with the help of St. Thomas uh, that he does have a last end in the first place. Uh, so I hope you'll stick around for that. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Um, and I'll see you next time.